So I'm like a family, a little technical difficulties, but we back on. Uh, first and foremost, I want to apologize for the technical difficulties yesterday on yesterday's show. Uh, but today we have a special presentation. Uh, I won't be on long, just real quick. Just came from a beautiful push. Not only with my brothers in the FOI here at Moss 27, West Point, LA, but also with the mighty, mighty MGT coming from what we call Ground Zero, uh, Crenshaw, Slauson. But I wanted to touch on something that was on my heart. I woke up with it on my heart. And not just a tribute to this beautiful man you see to my right, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, 86 years of life, service, and sacrifice, but also something that, that, that I felt on my heart that was both positive but negative. But it overall was positive, dear family. First of all, let me start off in the proper fashion. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who appeared to us mercifully in the person of Master W. Fard Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever. I further bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. He's at least his messenger, but in fact, exalted Christ. And I, uh, of course, bear witness without a doubt in my mind that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, this brother right here, is indeed, indeed, our divine leader, teacher, and guide in our midst. He's the last man standing. And this, this quick video, I'm just going to touch on the simple fact that after 60 plus years of something, we can finally claim victory. Because in my humble opinion, the thing that we know of as COINTELPRO, COINTELPRO has failed. COINTELPRO has failed. And this beautiful man to my right is, he's, he's the reason that we can honestly say that J. Edgar Hoover's plan, for those that don't know, his plan, his overall plan, was to not only to stop the aspect of Negro unity, but also to stop the rise of a black Messiah. His words, not mine. J. Edgar Hoover, the founder of the FBI, his whole goal for years, from Marcus Garvey to today, his whole goal, even though he's not alive today, his spirit lives on in the FBI. His spirit lives on in many of the mechanisms of not only the American government, but even other mechanisms that are not directly tied to government, but just in white supremacy, is to stop the rise of the black Messiah. I, I, I feel like we can claim victory now through the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now we may get an opportunity to go over comments and questions, but I'm really not gonna be on long. I just gotta get this off my heart because in the last 60 plus years, we've had to deal with this COINTELPRO phenomenon, but I, I, I really believe that black people, Aboriginal people in general, underestimate what COINTELPRO really was. You know, I think some of us are too quick to just think it was as simple as tapping phones, uh, you know, putting agents and provocateurs in organizations like the Nation of Islam, Black Panther Party, causing disruption that would later lead to assassinations, later lead to fights, later lead to, you know, great organizations like the Black Panther Party falling apart. Even the Nation of Islam, you know, for all intents and purposes, ceased to exist in 1975 before it was raised by this beautiful brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But it was deeper than that. That's just how it started. But remember, the goal was whenever you start a business, an organization, you have something called, you know, I believe they call it, it's, it's called a, uh, a mission statement. The mission statement of COINTELPRO was to stop the rise 
of a black messiah. So the mechanism started with the simple infiltration of organizations, tapping phones, agents, provocateurs. For those who don't know what a provocateur is, these individuals who go between two individuals or between an organization and they just start stuff, you know, just full of drama. And sometimes we write these people off as just being dramatic, you know, but really sometimes it might be that they were sent to do that and they're just doing their job. But it's deeper than that because the, the spirit, and you know, when we use that word spirit, it's not always positive. You know, the spirit of COINTELPRO leaked into every arm, every machination of white supremacy. And one way for me that kind of that I just woke up on my spirit was the fact that COINTELPRO, in a way, and I want y'all to follow me on this, it merged with the spirit of the Willie Lynch or slave making process. You know, and I don't really care if Willie Lynch existed as a person. One thing that's for sure, his actual process of breaking a black king, a black god, a black queen, a black god into a slave, into a nigga was absolutely real. And we are walking, talking examples of it and proof of it still today in 2019. And it's like Willie Lynch collided with COINTELPRO and it's broken up a lot of black homes. It's broken up a lot of black families. And what you have to realize, and we have what they call Mother's Day coming up tomorrow. Shout out to all the mothers. We should love our mothers, you know, every day. But tomorrow is Mother's Day. But the black family was destroyed. And you have these machinations in, in, in the welfare system that tells a sister that she'll get a certain amount of money every month and she'll, she'll get discounted housing and everything just as long as she doesn't have a man in the house. Just as long as she doesn't have a man in the house. And then since our houses, our homes are destroyed and our communities are colonies, not communities, communities are free people living together, working together, building together. Colonies are just people who are of a lesser status being controlled by people from the outside of a greater status. So our communities are really colonies. We out here, our families are broken. And this feeds that idea and that mission statement of stopping the rise of a black Messiah. Because you have a lot of women, a lot of black women, I love my sisters, love y'all to death, but it's a lot of women over the last 50 to 60 years, particularly in the last 30 to 40 years, that have raised their children, not just their sons, but even their daughters in our house, where they're telling them, niggas ain't shh, you know, don't trust no nigga. I don't need no nigga. I don't need nobody but me. I don't need, I, I, you know, I can do bad all by myself. And you know what? Some of us as black men, We've done such terrible things and we've fallen so short of our nature and what we're supposed to be in our households that you really can't blame the sister. But you always got to look at the strings when you see puppets. And we've been made into puppets. But now who's, who's Geppetto? Who's pulling the strings? So stopping the rise of a black messiah went deep, as deep as the black household because it's the last 30, 40 years We've been a generation raised to hate black men. And I'm talking about little black boys and little black girls. We've become a generation raised to distrust another black man, another aboriginal man. That's the generation that we in. I don't trust no nigga, you know? I don't need no nigga. You hear black men talk like this, you know? Keep my circle small. Your circle small, you know. I mean, we got that kind of mentality right now, and that's that COINTEL, that's that advanced level two, level three COINTEL pro. Now, you're probably saying, Well, damn, brother, if it's that bad, how can you say that COINTEL pro failed? Well, whenever you have a war, and COINTEL pro went to war with the salvation of black people many years ago, 
And whenever you have a war, there's going to be a winner at the end, inshallah, you know, hopefully. But when the smoke clears, there's going to be a lot of bodies on both sides. It's going to be a lot of ruins, a lot of things destroyed. So I'm not saying that we came out unscathed, but the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the resurrection of the Nation of Islam, and the work that he's put in proves that COINTELPRO eventually failed. You know, and I want to bring up a picture right here that my that my wife pulled up. And I want to make a point real quick. Mm -hmm. The picture that you're looking at right here, I have no idea who the brother is on the far left. I have no idea who the brother on the far right is. But I do know that the brother in the middle is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. At the time, he was known as Little Louis Walcott. Louis Eugene Walcott. They called him Gene at that time. But something about this picture caught my attention the first time I saw it. It wasn't just, oh, look at the little minister. Oh, wow. You know, that was the first reaction. But then something else caught my attention that really got my mind moving. And that was the fact that if you look closely, this was long before. Again, the brother in the middle, that's the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. This was long before the minister knew anything, Louis Walcott knew anything about the Nation of Islam. He may have known a little bit about Marcus Garvey. He said he had an uncle that he would go to his house and he would see a picture of Marcus Garvey on the wall. But he didn't know anything about Elijah Muhammad. He didn't know anything about Master Fahd Muhammad. He didn't know anything about the FOI, MGT. But look how they're dressed. Look how they're dressed. I just came off the block. I just came from pushing the, the, the number one news not controlled by the Jews. I just came from pushing the mighty final call. And I was pushing the final call with brothers that was dressed just like that. So I say that to say this. When Master Fahd Muhammad, we believe, if you have your final call newspaper, I want you to always, for those of you who are not in the nation of Islam, and even some of us who are not in the nation, who are in the nation, excuse me, we should take the time to always go back to this right here. This is the Muslim program of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's what the Muslims want. It's what the Muslims believe. And we should always go back to that particularly when it comes to point number 12. And it says, I quote, we believe in the nation of Islam that Allah God appeared in the person of Master W. Fard Muhammad, July 1930, the long awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. We believe further and lastly that Allah God, that Allah is God and besides him there is no God and he will bring about a universal government of peace wherein we can all live in peace together. So Master Far Muhammad came and made himself known in July 1930. And he set up a military structure for the men and the women, for the men, FOI, for the women, MGT. The meaning of FOI is fruit of Islam, the name given to the military training of the men that belong to Islam in North America. The MGT, that's the training of the women. I believe it's to, what is it, so? cook take care of their husbands uh what keep is house. it keep house, house and how to act uh, at home and abroad yeah and, and how to rear their children i didn't say that in order but that's because i'm not in that class and i should never be in that class and none of y'all brothers should ever be in that class but i should know that because that's in our lessons i should know that verbatim but when you look at the meaning of those two classes those were things that were taught in black households throughout the black community back at that time, the time that you're looking at. That was taught in Lewis Walcott's household. His mother knew how to sew. She made money and helped the, the family, you know, make ends meet through sewing, cooking. And obviously she, she did a decent job of rearing children. The brother, when he walked into the Nation of Islam for the first time, he was a talent, talented violinist whom his mother pushed on him to make sure that he had that musical talent. And, you know, a lot of children back then, a lot of young men, they grew up. In fact, here's the actual statistic. 
Even though the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan did not have a relationship with his biological father, in the time that you're seeing on this picture, there are three brothers on that picture. There's actually four, but I cropped out the fourth brother just to keep it simple. But there are three brothers on this picture. Statistically, two out of those three, the minister, Louis Walcott, on this picture being the one who didn't, two out of those three, I guarantee you, had a father at home. Because in that time, at least 75% of black households had a father figure in it, a strong, hardworking father figure. And about 25 to 30% of black households at that time did not. Fast forward to today, through the deeper machinations of COINTELPRO, that's been flipped around. Now about only 25 to 30% of Aboriginal, which includes our Hispanic family, of their households have a father figure in that household. And 75, sometimes even 80% of these households have a do not have a father figure. So 80% don't have them today. About 80% back then did have them. So you had households that were solid. Mothers that taught their daughters how to sew, cook take care of their husbands you know rear children and how to act at home and abroad that was being taught at home even though they might have been eating pork chops in between all that you know but they taught my own mother knew how to sew she knew how to she knew how to cook she could throw down she knew how to rear children she knew how to beat that behind too trust me i bear witness but those things were taught in households back then, but they're not taught now. So why did Master Farah Muhammad, here's my point, why did he bring something like that to a, to a people who even though they were destroyed, we've been destroyed since slavery for 400 years, but we wasn't as bad off in many ways as we are now. Why did he bring those teachings? Why did he bring manhood training to young men who already had, who 70%, 75% of which had fathers at home? Why did he bring sewing, cooking, cleaning, and all those things have deeper meanings as well? Why did he bring that to sisters, you know, who were already being taught that at home? Because he was sowing the seeds, my humble opinion. This is your brother's opinion now. This is not necessarily the opinion of the nation of Islam. This is my humble opinion that God in person, Master Father Muhammad, was sowing the seeds of a time that would come later down the road where he saw the prison industrial system. He saw the welfare system, the modern welfare system. He saw the, the, the deviation, the filth on television, the filth in our music. He saw the deviation that would cause our homes to fall, to cause our, our households to be broken up and cause us to have, you know, you know, 75%, 80% of our families not having fathers. 80% of our households with not only mothers who don't have a father to help her raise the children, but she's got, she's disappointed and, and, and bitter about black men in particular. And that trickles down to the child. So you have a situation, I saw a very sad but true illustration on Facebook one day of, it was an animation. It had a mother sitting next to her daughter who was about six years old. And then next to the daughter was a son who was a toddler. And in the background, you saw a man with his bags packed going out the door. And the mama was saying, you know, the little dialogue bubble over her head like a comic. The, the, the mama was saying, I don't need no man. The little girl was saying, I don't want no man. And the little boy was saying, I don't want to be a man. I don't want to be a man. So Cointel Pro's tentacles go deeper than just wiretaps and agents and provocateurs. So I say all of this to say this family, as we move into this next dis dispensation, dispensation of time, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been the last, I would say stake in the heart of Cointel Pro, but it's been a vicious war and it's taken a lot of our casualties. But as we, as we move into the next uh, dispensation of time, we got to make sure that we don't have COINTELPRO. I'm talking to the sisters and the brothers, that we don't have COINTELPRO in our mind. That means, are you, do you hesitate? Do you, do you, are you hindered when you get instructions from another black man? Do you take instructions from another black person, male or female, 
and do you move out on those instructions a little bit slower than you would if it was some white boy at your job? I'm talking to the brothers and the sisters. Ask yourself that, because if you do, that's Willie Lynch and COINTELPRO working together like a hurricane in your mind and in your spirit. So, you know, her, you know, the COINTELPRO is dead in my opinion, but it died a very slow death and it put up a good fight. And the only way it could come back is if it comes back through us. So let's make sure, no matter what you, what you call yourself, you call yourself a Muslim, you call yourself a whatever, a Jew, Hebrew, Israelite, call yourself a black nationalist, whatever. We should have the utmost respect for all of the black leaders who have truly sacrificed for us. And not just the black leaders who are household names. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the most beautiful thing about him is that he creates black leaders. Mm. He creates father figures. Here in, on the West Coast in Los Angeles, we have a Western Regional student captain who's been a father figure to young men, student captain Haleem Muhammad, who's been a father figure to young men for, over four, for almost 40 years, longer than I've been on this earth. And he's seen so much, been through so much. Our Western Regional Student Minister, Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad, he's been in the nation a little over 25 years. Actually, he's been in the nation longer than that, about 33 years, but he's been here in LA as our Regional Minister for 25 years. He's been a father figure. Nipsey Hussle saw him as a mentor, would call him, you know, for guidance on different things, respected him, and respected him since he was a teenager, you know. So the minister creates mentors. He creates father figures. You see how that's mending the work of COINTELPRO, mending the work of the prison industrial, you know, program. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what real black leadership is. So whether you are part of that or you call yourself, you're a card carrying member of this or that, you should respect any black man that's throwing at least one stone at COINTELPRO, throwing at least one stone to white supremacy, throwing at least one stone to anything that's dangerous to us. That's why it's beautiful that Facebook considered the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan dangerous. I think that's beautiful because it's right and exact. He is dangerous. He is absolutely dangerous to everything that is dangerous to the Aboriginal people of this earth. So I just wanted to get that off my, my chest. I do have one more thing to say, particularly to our young brothers and sisters. Uh, for one, um, we do have an open FOI class in your city, wherever you are. Come on out Monday night, 7.30, whatever city you are, you know, do the research. But I know here in Los Angeles, it's gonna be 8701 uh, uh, South Vermont, Los Angeles, California, 90044. Be my guest. I'll throw in a free bean pie or free something, you know, because I, I take care of my guests. My guests are in, uh, VIP guests. But come on out. We got an open FOI class. You don't want to miss it. But to our young brothers, and when I say young brothers, I'm basically talking from birth to 50. And I, however you feel. To our young brothers, we are, li we are living... And I'm going to close with this. We living in the Joshua hour. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan called the young generation today the Joshua generation. In my humble opinion, the Joshua in that generation is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now, for those who are not familiar with, with Joshua in the Bible or Quran, Joshua, Moses did a great work of civilizing the people of that time however he did not see the promised land he did not get the people to the promised land the people got to the promised land through joshua who was trained by moses and what jo what moses did you know and when the minister deemed us the joshua generation a lot of us took that you know our chest just puffed up man like man we the ones that's gonna take it but i think a lot of us took it as a uh, as an inheritance, like the minister was handed something down to us. This is not something that's gonna be handed to us. Moses in the scripture, he chose 12 spies and these were all supposed to be the cream of the crop from every, you know, every tribe of the house of Israel, you know, uh, and, and he took those 12 spies. They were to spy 
the Canaanite spy the land of Canaan and he sent them there to find out you know you know this is military he made them captains and he, and he sent them there find out you know the lay of the land how the people are so when we take it we know what's going on you don't just run up in somebody's land and just take it that's not how it works you need to go in there do your research send someone to, we, you know we use similar tactics in the foi I can't go into detail but we don't just jump up on the block somebody somebody figures out what's going on there before we we all jump out but uh he sent those 12 spies and when they got there now remember it was 12 spies but when they came back 10 out of those 12 spies they were absolutely intimidated now, these were supposed to be the best of the best, the soldiers, you know, but they came back intimidated. Ten out of those 12 spies, they were intimidated and they were enamored. If you don't know what that word means, look it up. They were enamored. They were impressed with the Canaanites. They were impressed with the world. You know, they, you know, they brought back grapes, you know, they was eating the grapes and the grapes was the sweetest grapes they ever tasted in their life. They probably weren't the sweetest grapes. They was just thought that they were sweeter just because it was in the land of Canaan. You know how we do. We think things are better just because it's white people. So they came back with some grapes thinking that's going to impress Moses. Oh, look, Moses, look at the grapes. And they reported what they found to Moses. And one of them, many of them said, many of them said, Moses, they look like giants. And we felt like grasshoppers. We felt like grasshoppers amongst them. And they look like giants. They look scared. In fact, they were sounding so punctified and so weak that Caleb, who was one of the spies, Caleb stood up and literally said, shut up. If you go into your Bible, it'll say Caleb stilled them, S-T-I-L-L-E-D, which means to shut somebody up. You know, that's just that King James poetic way of saying Caleb stood up and said, shut up and let Moses speak. And then Caleb and Joshua, who were two of those 12 spies who did not come back intimidated or enamored, they said, listen, Moses, I don't know what these punks talking about, but we're going to go in here and we're going to take this. We're going to take this. Just give us the word. We're going to go in there and take it. They wasn't giants and we ain't no damn grasshoppers. I'm giving you the King LeBron James translation. It's the hood version. But they went ahead and took it. But 10 of them were too scared and weak. In fact, if you could pull up that uh that uh that eye yacht in fact the 10 that were scared were really reflecting the same mentality just in a different way the same mentality of the elders of israel the murmurers in the wilderness who really weren't feeling it at all who were really scared who were really enamored and they didn't even go to the promised land but they still feared but listen to what they said to Moses, and this is going to come down to the point I'm trying to make. In the Holy Quran, Surah 5, and Ramadan, uh, Mubarak, to all my Muslims out there who are not only fasting, but also reading your Quran, uh, you probably ran into this reading either today or yesterday, depending on when you started. But in the Holy Quran, Surah 5, 23, I'm going to read it real quick. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Two men of those who feared, on whom Allah had bestowed a favor, this was Joshua and Caleb, who Allah had bestowed a favor, said, Enter upon them by, thy, by the gate, for when you enter it, you will surely be victorious. And put your trust in Allah if you are believers. And they said, O oh Moses, we will now, these are the murmurers, these are the weak ones. He said, they said, oh, Moses, we will never enter it so long as they are in it. Talking about white people, I mean Canaanites. As long as they are in it. Go therefore thou and thy Lord and fight. Surely here we sit. Mm -hmm. So basically what they telling to Moses, hey, Moses, if you want the promised land, go ahead and get that. But we will sit back, come back and let us know when you get it. And then we'll come. But we ain't gonna fight. They too big. We like little grasshoppers and they like giants. And I say that to say this about this beautiful man that's to my right. Sometimes when it comes to black leaders, the first thing we want to say, well, what they did for me, what they gonna do for me. If we're gonna take the promised land, if we're gonna take our rightful place in this world, 
The only thing we should want from our leaders is the same thing that Joshua and Caleb needed from Moses. They just said, Moses, just say the word. Just give us guidance. Just tell us when to go. Tell us when to go. Like that E-40 song. Tell us when to go. That's the only thing you should need if you're really about that life, if you're really about the salvation of our people. You just need guidance. You just need instructions. You just need a map. Tell us where Canaan is. Tell us where the Canaanites are. We got them. You know, pass me that thing. Let's get them. You know, for those who remember, the, you know, No Limit, Master P days, I ain't going to go there. But that's the spirit when we follow our leaders. Our leader's job is to give us a clear message and guide us in the right path. Guide us in the right path. If you still sitting back talking about, you know, what y'all going to do for me? Now, we've done plenty. Built schools, built infrastructure, you know, change people's lives. You know, media publications, long standing. Number one news not controlled by the Jews. We have our own Netflix. We have our own successful, extremely successful prison ministry. You know, we're, we're reforming people literally all over the planet Earth in the nation of Islam. And you know what? The nation of Islam, we're not the only black faction, the only black organization doing good things for the people. But if you got the mentality, that welfare mentality that I need a check, I need a little crumb, I need a little food stamp, I need a little government cheese to make me feel like you're doing something for me. You got the mind of a murmurer in the wilderness that's sitting up, sitting up there telling Moses, you go take the promised land and then when we, we'll sit here and sit. And there are even those in these great organizations, including the Nation of Islam, who just sitting back and sitting and waiting to see somebody bring something to them. That's not the spirit of the minister. That's not the spirit of the aboriginal black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. So family, that's all I wanted to get off my chest. Once again, Ramadan Mubarak to all those that are out there in the Nation of Islam and in Islam in general, we don't necessarily deal with birthdays, but I thank Allah. I thank uh, the mother of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for raising him. I thank the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad for raising him as his spiritual father and raising him up and guiding him. I thank the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for every bit of sacrifice, all the stones thrown at him, all the, all the blades stabbed in his back, you know, all the attempts at his life, literally and figuratively, and I thank him for his life, for his service and his sacrifice and he's 86 years. And I just say to those of us who are walking with this great man, that it's time for us to walk that walk for him. He can't walk it forever. It's time for us to take his instructions. He gave us clear instructions. The two commandments of Jesus from Jesus. Y'all didn't hear that. The two commandments of Jesus from Jesus. Love thy neighbor and love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul and strength so with that said i ain't gonna say happy birthday but i will say that i thank allah for these 86 years of life and for 64 plus years of service you know he's been a father for me i didn't have my biological father in my life and i thank him for that and brothers let's be men let's be men let's cut that cycle that cointel pro cycle of being distrustful you know, at, the, at least let's respect any black man. I love to see any black man that's doing anything for our community. Brothers that's coaching football, you know, martial arts, just being a mentor, just being a good OG, you know, whatever, man. Let's show love to these brothers wherever we find them, even if we got a little envy in our heart about them, even if they're so successful at what they do that they actually are living a comfortable life based on it. Who deserves more to live a comfortable life than somebody that's sacrificing their life for their people? Who would you rather see live a comfortable life? Bill Gates? Donald Trump? You kiss their shoes? John Gotti? You kiss gangster shoes who, who sell dope, but a man that's, that's selling hope? Come on, man, not even selling it. He giving it. He serving it. With that said, dear brothers and sisters, I want to thank you all. To all my believing family in the nation of Islam, let's keep pushing this program and let's take our rightful place. I want you to watch a lecture called The Four Jesuses. The Four Jesuses. You're like, I thought it was just one. The Four Jesuses by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, because that's the hour that we in right now. That said, I leave you as I greeted you in the words of peace. Make sure you tune in on NOI.org tomorrow. 
our beloved Western Regional Student Minister Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad will be teaching from Mas Mariam, teaching on our experience of securing all of LA through this Nipsey Hustle situation and beyond that. So with that, with that said, I went a little longer than I thought I would, but I felt like I deserved that the people deserve to get you know a little nation town live in their life since we had technical difficulties yesterday so with that said i leave you all as i greeted you in the words of peace i salam alaikum